Hi, I'm Shelly Young, owner of The Chopping Block, and today I'm going to teach you how to cook lobster. We're going to do live lobster, and I also have a frozen lobster tail. Uh, we see them come both ways, so I thought it would be good to cover both techniques. They're just a little bit different. And we're also going to make lobster thermidor, which is a delicious recipe we're going to make from the lobster itself. I'm going to start with our live lobsters and getting our water ready to boil that lobster. We're going to use two techniques. We're going to boil it um, to cook it partially and to kill the lobster. And yes, the lobster is alive, the live lobster. Um, so I want to prepare that water. And I'm going to take a big, deep stock pot. You need a, preferably a 12-quart stock pot in this case, or an 8-quart stock pot if you're, you can fit the lobster in. But it is very important that you have ample water to submerge the lobster in completely. That is the humane way to do that. So you want to make sure that there's a quick plunge, rapidly boiling water, which we also season a little bit. With a bouquet garni, which I'm going to start by making right now. I've got two kind of deep pieces of celery. They act as a little holder for this. We've got some nice parsley leaves. Keep the stems. Those are the best part. A big handful of fresh thyme. A few bay leaves. I take my celery, put one on one side, one on the other side. I'm going to wrap that with string to hold it together and keep the herbs from floating around in there. And we're going to drop this into our pot of water and bring it to a boil, along with an onion cut in half and a lemon cut in half. We have here uh, an Australian lobster tail. These come frozen, just them in the refrigerator. Um, and we can take the meat out and cook it, saute it, and what have you. But I want to show you how to cook it in the shell. A lot of people are confused about that. The first thing we do, a little trick here, just to fan out the tail, we take the outer leaf and we kind of, or the outer tail, and just kind of prop it up like this. And it looks pretty that way. Or at least I think it looks pretty that way. The next thing that we do, I think scissors are the easiest way to do this. I just cut down the back of the shell like that. And then I make two small cuts down here at the base of the tail. It's like a T, like this. I open the shell up like so. And what I can see here is this part didn't get cut. I'm actually going to cut that. It just looks prettier when it's cut like that. I pull it out, but don't detach it from the lobster shell. And then you just put this over the top and fan out the meat like that. So just take a little melted butter, put that over. Take a little bit of sweet paprika. Oops, that, that went on the side, fortunately. And just give a little, and this is optional. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to, but it just looks pretty. We're going to put that in the oven and broil that for about 10 minutes. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. Lobster tail looks great. One of the, uh, I guess, advantages, disadvantages is that the lobster tail starts to bow a little bit. I can see underneath there. Um, you'll see that it's opaque or white. Uh, and I know it's done. It has a nice golden brown on the lobster, too. My water is rapidly boiling. The water is all the way up here. Um, Again, as I said, make sure that your pot is big enough to hold the whole lobster and that the lobster is completely submerged. We go head first, down in, and make it fast. You need to just take your tongs, make sure they're pushed down so that, again they're completely submerged. They will stop moving within a few seconds. You want to get the lobsters when they're coming out of the water into some ice water. It's a little hard to have the right bowl or pan to really submerge them completely, um, but I think this was about the best that I came up with. Uh, this is about six minutes. Uh, it's going to depend a little bit on the amount of lobsters and the size of your pan and all that. 
But what I say is, as soon as that water comes to a boil, a rapid boil again, it's time to pull the lobsters out. So we just reach in, get our lobsters, and into the ice bath. We're gonna let these cool and we'll come back and I'll show you how to make the lobster thermidor as well as get these out of the shell. So our lobsters are nice and cool. We've stopped the cooking. Um, next thing we're gonna do is work on putting together the thermidor. I, I should have mentioned also if I were going to just eat the lobster right out of the boiling water versus making this into the thermidor, which we're doing today, you would just take it right out of the boiling water. Just kind of put it on a towel, make sure that the water is, is coming off, and then you would prepare the lobster like I am here. Or leave it whole and let your guests figure it out, but that's might be a little bit mean. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with uh, just pulling the claws off, like so, pulling those aside. Um, this, we usually leave whole the body and pull the claws off and, so we can get all that good meat out of there. Um, sometimes people will um, um, pull this tail off, but what we're gonna do today is actually cut it in half and we're gonna cut it in half this way. Just go right down the center of the lobster, like so. Just kind of a magic line right between all the claws. Go right in here. Good sharp knife, be careful. Get a good, make sure you have a good big cutting board and good grip. Sharp knife. Go back down to the tail. Now, when you open up the lobster, see these things will come out. There's this uh, green tamale. Some people eat that, but generally we discard that. If you see any eggs in there, they will be black. We save those and we'll put them in the tarragon bechamel. But this is an easiest way to get to the meat. It's just to break it open like so. Okay, we're gonna stuff this shell again. So I'm gonna pull the meat out, and all I need to do is go in here and grab it out. Really is not too hard to do. Just comes right out, one piece, just like that. I'm gonna set that aside, we'll cut that up. Okay, I'm gonna repeat this with the other lobsters. So we were lucky enough to get some eggs in one of our Lobster, so I wanted to show you that. This black sack right here is the eggs. If you, if you don't like that, of course, you don't need to put that into your dish, but I'm gonna pull this out because we're gonna include that in with the, the lobster meat when we cut it up. Uh, the lobster claw, sometimes these are pretty cooperative, sometimes they're not. Um, these are a little sharp, so if it's hurting your hand, put a towel over the, the outside of the claw. It also helps a little bit with the juice. But basically what I'm doing is I'm just breaking it apart. And then I snap it and then I try to slowly pull. Occasionally the meat will come out like that. Most of the time it doesn't, at least not for me. I'm from Iowa, we did not have any lobster there. So I'm sure you East Coasters are way better at this than I am. I like scissors the best versus smashing. To me, you're better off there. It's easier to get um, a nice piece of meat out of there. I use the same technique for the claw. Oh, this one isn't going to do it. So, this is my other tool in the kitchen. I use this as my hammer. I 
This was a hard one. Let's see if I can just get a piece out there. I'm going to try to go in through again with my scissors because again that's the easiest for me to cut through the shell. And if I want to try to get it out whole, So I, I'm going to pick out the best of my claws. Some that came out pretty good. That one may not be perfect, that it's big and striking, so I'm going to keep that. The other claws meat, I'm going to put back in with the tail meat. We're going to chop the tail meat up. We're going to mix that in with the tarragon bechamel. You'll see a bechamel video on our website. And we'll post the recipe for the tarragon bechamel with this. We're going to mix this with the, the bechamel and put it back into the shells. Garnish it with Parmesan cheese. I'm going to put that in the oven at 375 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. I'm just double checking to make sure that I didn't miss some shells because there's a good possibility that I did. Nobody wants to bite into those. half a cup of Parmesan cheese. So now we're going to take this filling, fill those tails back up. Oh my gosh, look at that. Put a little up here too. We're going to sprinkle these with a little Parmesan cheese so they get a nice golden top. And then we're going to top this, each one of these, with a little claw. Pop them in the oven. So our lobster thermidors come out of the oven. Oh my god. Steaming hot, golden brown. A little bit of traditional garnish, I think, is the best. A little lemon. A little parsley. Let's not forget our tail. Quick and easy to put together. A little lemon and parsley as well. And that is how you cook lobster.